How about those cats that just go off for no reason? You'll be like petting them and they'll be enjoying it. You'll be like petting them and they'll be like, oh yeah, that's nice. And they're like, Rawr! and they just, and they just bite you, just bite the crap out of your hand. Oh yeah, keep scratching. Rawr! So mad. Like, what's that all about? Like, people can't do that. You can't even do that once. You bite someone once mid conversation and you go to prison. Probably. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Oh, just me and the cats today, I guess. Dude, when I was growing up, like all I wanted in my life was for our family cat to pay attention to me. That's all I wanted. I was homeschooled. And so (laughs) it's not a big shocker that my cat was my best friend. Um, And I would dress my cat up in funny costumes and take pictures, um, totally normal stuff like that, normal homeschooler activities. Um, but yeah, oh God, my family cat growing up was huge, morbidly obese, just this giant, massive cat, and I thought it was hilarious, like we all did. And that cat lived 19 years. We did everything wrong with that cat. We fed that cat way too much. We let it get fat. We let it go outside. It would just leave. This cat would leave for just days at a time. We'd think she'd be gone forever. Like, okay, I guess we don't have a cat anymore. And then like, oh, there she is. Just like at the back door, like just massive, massive cat. Like people would come over and they'd be like, oh my God. We're like, I know you want a picture. Can you show your friends? They're like, is this cat, is this, is she okay? We're like, she's fine. Come on, let's get a picture. Let's get a picture. You're going to want to remember this. Um, but yeah, that cat lived 19 years. I don't know what to tell you. Um, oh God, I remember this cat would sleep on my face and I would love it. I would get so excited. This cat would sleep right here. Like she'd try to sleep beside my head but because she was so fat she just it just kind of bled over onto my face so all night I was just like this is awesome just like I couldn't breathe at all it's a wonder I have allergies now um but yeah just cat fur in my nose just just wheezing all night just cannot breathe at all and I loved it I loved it so much um but that's not the case anymore. I just wanted that cat to be around me at all times. Just pay attention to me, love me, be my best friend. And that's not, that's not the case anymore. Like the Kevins, I'm totally fine if they're just gone for days, for days and days and weeks. I'm totally fine with it. Uh, there's enough people in this house who need things from me just constantly all the time that like my relationship with Kevin is like, if I could just not see you all day, that'd be great. If you could just disappear for a while, that'd be amazing. Just disappear for like 10 hours. Just like show up when you like need food and you're hungry. Do something cute. Do that like somersault thing where you show your belly and I'll scratch you for like 12 seconds and then just go away again. Just leave me alone, please. That's my ideal situation. Um, the Kevins are basically like roommates that I met on Craig on um, Craigslist. Yeah, <laughs> I nearly forgot about Craigslist. Man, is that still happening? Is that still popping? Are people still on Craigslist just like selling motorcycles and whatever misconnections? Whatever you do on Craigslist, trying to put bands together. <laughs> to put a band together via Craigslist. And I'll tell you why I know this. I'm in a band right now. It's called Von Bolt. And um, I was recruited into this band. Not like, that's weird to say that I was recruited. But basically my friend James is like the lead singer and he asked me to be part of the, 
part of the band. I didn't like seek out the band, you know? Um, but like back when I was living in Portland, I was early twenties, like a good looking young, like 21 year old girl living in Portland by herself. Uh, and I'm like, I want to sing in a band. It just like occurred to me. I'm like, I want to sing in a band. And so I went on Craigslist. I went on Craigslist and, um, I just like looked for any band that was seeking a singer. And then I would meet up with them. <laughs> it sounds, if my daughter told me right now that she was going to do that and she was like 35, I'd be like, what are you doing? You're going to get murdered. Um, but yeah, I, uh, there was like one in particular that was like, we're like, a, we want like an evanescent sound. And I'm like, I can totally be Amy Lee, like paint my nails black and be all like, Bring me to life. She sounds so much better than that. It's a disservice to her. Um, and so I was like, let's meet up. And they're like, really? Uh, and we met up at a Sherry's. And anybody who lives in the Pacific Northwest knows what a Sherry's is. I don't think they have them outside the, like, the Pacific Northwest. It's, it's like an IHOP. Basically, it's like known for pie. You go to Sherry's for pie. Um... So I just met up with like these three random dudes, the most just random musician looking dudes who could absolutely be serial killers. I met up with them by myself with no security or safety or weapons. I didn't bring a single weapon. I didn't bring mace. I didn't bring a samurai sword. I brought nothing. I brought myself, probably in a skimpy outfit. Poor choice. Um, <laughs> I'm literally, I'm remembering this right now. So we went to Sherry's. Um, and then after that, we went to a secondary location. You're never supposed to go to a secondary location. And we went to a secondary location. We went to their, their practice space, which was a warehouse, like an old, just like an old creepy warehouse where we were driving in and, uh, there were not a lot of people around. Um, if they didn't murder me, but if they were going to, they had to have been just cracking up laughing in the car in front of me because I was following them with my car. They had to have been like, oh my God, she's following us. Like she's, go she's voluntarily coming to the secondary location. <laughs> and they like, they rolled up the garage door. And they're like, come on inside. And I'm like, okay. God, it's so easy to murder stupid girls like me. God, that would have been so easy for them to kill me. Um, but they didn't. And I thank them for that. They actually just performed a couple songs for me. And they were terrible. Um, so I left. And I never talked to them again. And they didn't follow me or murder me or anything because I'm still alive. So, hey, Kevin, if you could just not just stare at me over there that'd be great staring at me he's gonna murder me we all know that so anyway what was I talking about um Craigslist that's what we we're talking about yeah so the Kevins are just like roommates I met on Craigslist I found on Craigslist and, you know, we don't want to be in each other's lives. So just you leave me alone and I'll leave you alone. And we're good. Um, and as long as I see some barf spots on the carpet every once in a while, then I'll know you're still alive. I go a couple days without a barf spot and I'll start looking under some beds. I'll start getting curious as to where uh, Kevin is. Um... So I guess that uh, I should talk about what this is. I normally don't like intros and outros and hosty type stuff, but I'm going to talk about what this is because this is new and you're tuning in and you're like, this is a new set. I built this set. I designed it. Um, okay. 
So basically, I'm making this show as like an exercise for myself in being myself, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of you have been fans of mine since I was 12 years old, since I was on Even Stevens. I'll show some video of my Even Stevens episodes. Probably, if I can find them. I don't know if I have them. So you've seen me in a lot of dis different capacities. My YouTube videos, and I'd say my YouTube videos are the closest to me being myself, even though those were pretty high energy, you know? Uh, and I would do multiple takes of those YouTube videos. If I didn't like a take, I would do it again, and I would say the same thing over and over again. And that's not authentic. That's like I planned it, and now I'm reciting lines to you like an actor. Um, but right now, like, I'm not actor Lisa. I'm not host Lisa. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not any labels. I'm just myself. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if like me being myself is like the one thing everyone's like, I don't like it. I don't, I don't prefer this at all. Um, so yeah, I just want to like be myself and be cool with you guys. And, um, you know, being an actor is interesting because you get to explore all sorts of facets of yourself while remaining whole, if that makes sense. Um, Hi, I know. You're, so, you're the good one. She's the good one. I don't even know where Kevin is. He was here for a second. He just pieced out. Um, the best way to describe it is like being an actor is like um, different rooms in a house. You know, like uh, host Lisa is like this room and you've hung out with me in that room and you've commented on the interior design and the sconces and the curtains I've picked out. And that's great. You like that, Lisa. And you like video game Lisa and you like actor and Nickelodeon Disney Lisa. That's great. But you've only seen these rooms of me. You haven't seen the whole house. So this is, this is my house. Welcome to my house and my house. And you know what, speaking of houses, I would like to do a documentary on why all of the doorknobs in my house are different. No two doorknobs in my house are the same. How does that even happen? By accident. It's, it cannot be an accident. It's, so there's a couple different scenarios here that I've, I've thought about this so much. I have lost sleep over this. Okay, so my house is one of like a thousand cookie cutter tract homes just in my neighborhood alone. There are, a, there are billions, billions and billions and billions, like Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about the universe, billions and billions and billions of houses that look just like my house. They're everywhere. So obviously there's a home builder. He built my house and then what did he do? He went to Home Depot and went to the door aisle and went like, nah, just one of everything. Just one of every doorknob is great. Just, just ring them up. They're not gonna care, just ring them up. That can't be the case because he's a home builder. He does this all the time. I'm assuming he has some kind of you know, standard bulk order of doorknobs with like a dude, like Rob, like Rob at Rob's knobs. <laughs> yeah, we all get our doorknobs from Rob, Rob's knobs. He gives us a good deal. You know, he's a decent guy. You know, we, we golf. He's a good dude. We love Rob. Um, so that would make sense, right? They get a bulk order for every house of just the same crappy doorknob that they put in every door. That makes the most sense. So, assuming that that happened, the home builder, the original builder of my house, put the same doorknob in every door, then what happened? What happened after that? Assuming the home builder is not a complete pants on head moron, uh, even though he did put carpet in my bathroom. He put, car he put carpet in my bathrooms. All my bathrooms upstairs, both of them. He put carpet in them. There is a special place in hell for any home builder 
who puts carpet in, you know, um, you know, the circles of hell, like Dante and Virgil, how they're like their little adventure through hell. There's like the different circles of hell. Which ones are they? Let me look them up real quick. Um, circles of hell. Circles of hell. Okay. So, okay. First circle limbo. It's not that one. Uh, second circle lust, gluttony, greed. No anger. Heresy, heresy, it's heresy, it's heresy. So, <laughs> so these, these evil home builders, they get to hell and uh, they're like going through the circles and then they get to the sixth circle and um, the demon's like, <laughs> we got a special door just for you. And they lead him, they lead him like down a little hallway and there's just like one tiny door and they open the door and it's just a bunch of other guys. And turns out it's all the home builders in the world who have ever put carpet in bathrooms. And they all have to live there for eternity. Um, and they're just, just, just like, they just have to listen to like, <laughs> they just have to listen to like Sandstorm all day, all the time. Just like, just like all, all the time. And it's so loud. And they're like, ah, it's like um, when the chemical, the chemical Brothers played Coachella. There's all these like giant scary visuals just like scaring the crap out of them. What did it? What is on my shirt? Like scaring the crap out of them, but they can't. <laughs> they can never leave. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Is this one long song or is this 12 songs? Is this 85 songs or one song? Uh, do, 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 ah, there's no beginning and end points. It's the only thing I could think of when watching the Chemical Brothers at Coachella. Is that <laughs> how many songs are these? I'm not super familiar with their catalog, so um, I didn't know what was happening. I'm like, I, is this the same song that I've been listening to for an hour? That's fine. <laughs> I know. It is funny, actually. I don't need your commentary. It's hot as crap in here. I'm, I'm sweating through my shirt. That's embarrassing. That's going to be another thing about um, this show is that with my YouTube videos, I used to like not film if uh, I like my face was broken out. Like if I had like one bad zit, I'd be like, I'm not I'm not filming this week. It's not happening. I'm not going to do it. If the world can't see me perfect, the world can't see me at all. That's not going to happen anymore. If I have a zit, throw lipstick and falsies on that thing and let's, let's camera action, you know. It's me, warts and all. <laughs> That's an expression, right? Like warts and all. I didn't just, just bring that up. It's so gross. Um, what was I talking about? Oh! The doorknobs. Okay, so we're in my documentary and we've established that um, the home builder did not do it, right? Okay, so if the home builder built my house with all the same doorknobs, then what happened after that? Okay, there's only been like one or two owners of this house before me. So what on earth, like for real? Did they just like, did they just walk in the house and see all the doorknobs being the same? And they're like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Jeremy, go to Home Depot, get, switch them all out. Get all new knobs, all new knobs, none the same. I want all new knobs, none the, none the same. All new knobs, none the same, none the same, none the same. I know. Okay, or alternatively, so say that didn't happen because that's ridiculous. Something had to have occurred to force them to switch out every doorknob. And that's the question that keeps me up at night. And that would be the climax of the documentary. It would be me. <laughs> it would be me and the former, the former owner of this house in like a, in like a dark library and I'd have glass and I'd be sitting across from him and I'd take my glasses and I'd lower them to the edge of my nose. I don't even wear glasses, but I would for this. And I'd lower them to the edge of my nose and I'd stare at him. 
And I'd be like, so tell me, what occurred that forced you to change out all of the doorknobs for different doorknobs? And then, like, the camera would zoom in on them. It would zoom in. And they'd start sweating. Like, huh, huh, huh. like, they have no idea what to say. And, like, boom. Like, the music is, like, boom. And they're, like, huh, 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 huh. Just have no, no idea. I do, I, and then it would come. <laughs> it'd be, that's the promo. That's the promo for the documentary. And just be, like, boom. And that's what gets you hooked. And we'd call it something like the turning point. Kevin, you get it? I said turning point. It's like, because you turn. You turn doorknobs. I don't know. I just feel like there would be an enormous weight lifted off of me and my life if I knew why all the doorknobs in my house were different. And I know that you guys um, don't understand that. But these are things I think about. Um, okay, how long have I gone? Oh, this is already longer than I planned. I wanted this to be like a 15-minute thing. We're already like longer than that. Um, anyway. I don't need this. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This is very rough. This is episode one. So uh, um, thank you guys for watching. Please comment. I'm going to read like comments and questions um, on every episode. And let's just be like a community. Let me build a community for this. Um, and uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. Not only to this, but just to like everything I've ever done. Wow. This... <laughs> It, it feels like I'm like, this is like my last message to the world. Like, thank you for always supporting me. It's really, this is like my legacy. What are you, what? I'm trying to, I'm trying to do my dying message over here. It's Riley. It's a dog. She's not invited on the podcast. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you for liking, subscribing, hanging out with me. There's going to be more of these. Sorry to say, it's just going to, it's just happening. We're rolling forward. We're doing it. Um, so thank you. Love you guys. Bye. And I definitely need new co-hosts for sure. Not just because I hate you, Kevin, but because I have a chair. I have an empty chair. So that's mainly why I need a cost, because I, I already bought the chair. This is like being homeschooled all over again. I bought the two chairs because I thought that I would have a friend. <laughs> but it's just my cat. Nothing in my life has changed. <laughs>